welcome. I'm Mandi Dhillon and you're watching ET Now and Samsung present BizBite, a show that focuses on the impact of technology on critical sectors of the Indian economy. We have a panel with years of experience in education and in technology. It's time to meet them. N. Reguraj, Managing Director, Netur Technical Training Foundation. Praveen Prakash, Co-Founder, Baiju Starfiz. Sukesh Jain, Vice President, Enterprise Business, Samsung, India. Mansoor Ali Khan, Board Member, DTS Bangalore and Mysore, and K.R. Shekhar, Partner, Deloitte, Haskins and Sells. Let's start, uh, Mr. Khan, with the word adoption. What is driving the adoption of technology in Indian education? And you have your finger on the pulse given the width and breadth of the DPS schools. The new generation is digitally born. For them, these things come naturally. And uh, the digitalization and technology has helped these learners make it a level playing ground. For example, if a child is a below average learner, slow learner, or a brilliant child, technology has given each child that particular leverage where they can utilize. And at the same time, with technology, for example, let it be tablets or smart classes. They have let the concepts become clearer to the child. For example, there were times when we were learning in schools formally, but what was the application of the formula? Today we are able to replicate and show what is used for what this particular purpose and for example, why should we learn trigonometry? Why should we learn? So we've been able to get the concepts right and make the classroom interesting and better learning experience. You're able to answer all the whys with greater conviction and more strongly. Mr. Regaraj, you run a vocational training foundation. Tell us, what does technology mean today yeah. for vocational training? Mm, the technology is a natural process of growth for us because uh, you always talk about productivity and productivity and we had a resources here earlier every 11 students an instructor in mechanical stream and about 15 18 uh, uh, students a lecturer in the other streams now after the introduction of technology the last two years we are able to move up these ratios mr prakash interactive collaborative we hear those words again and again when we're talking about technology and education but what's your experience been if you're trying to actually serve the purpose of educating students in a classroom environment, we assume the teacher is able to connect to each and every one of them. The reality here is there is always going to be a backbencher, there is always going to be a student right in front. It's the drive of this educator, this trainer, this teacher to ensure that he or she knows what's happening for every student at any point of time. Maybe the lesson is not being understood, maybe they cannot convert that into a test score, maybe they're not able to improve on their that particular area. How do you figure this out? Do you need you need a systematic form of assessment analysis that comes back both ways to the student. So it's a real-time feedback working both ways. It's a real-time feedback using student. technology. Yes, it cannot happen on uh, on a uh, uh, on a platform where you have a uh, blackboard or a whiteboard and the student is uh, really interacting. That's that's the reason why we need to have technology coming in to, into the hands of students, into the hands of teachers. Both of them are very important, and then probably taking it back home and completing the whole circle. Very, very essential. I'm throwing words out there to see how they link up with technology and education. And Mr. Jen, the word coming your way is access. Technology really widens access to education. Your thoughts? See, if you look at what technology has done in education in the last few years, it's been a paradigm shift. Moving from what we used to have computer labs to start off with, to projectors, and then to now VSAT-based distance learning education, to Wi-Fi campuses, and also in some places, smart classrooms. If you look at the K-12 segment, what's now becoming a new concept thanks to technology is called flipped classroom, which means what? As a student, do I come to class to learn the subject for the first time, or do I have a chance to actually learn it sitting at home at my convenience on a tablet with a lecture and the right kind of content available to me on a tablet and I go to the classroom just to ensure that my doubts are cleared. If you look at the prep segment, now there was always a limitation in terms of the space availability and the quality of the teacher. Today with the technology coming in and the content being available on tablets, these boundaries don't exist anymore. I as a student can sit in a remote corner of northeast of India and actually get the best of content because it's a teacher whose video has been 
shot and it's available as content to me in the form he would have taught me in a brick and mortar class. But I would just like to add here that a lot of this is still in concept stage. I would say adoption still needs to be happening a lot more than what it is today. But the word that's coming your way, Mr. Shekhar, is productivity. So far, all our panelists have focused on the student. But technology in education means greater productivity for teachers. That's right. And if you look at the challenges for any of the education institutions or the organizations is that uh, the mindset is still not moved to the virtual classroom. Our mindset is a physical classroom. The first thing that as a country that we need to look at is that look at technology as an enabler to give an education. The moment the mindset gets changed, then automatically the productivity will go up. That's number one. But if you look at the penetration, the internet penetration in India is hardly 19%. Sometimes I find the students are more equipped in technology than the teachers. We create a good institutes for students. How much technology institutes are created for the teachers to learn and unlearn. On that slightly uh, worried note, I'm going to ask each of you to briefly comment on what could be holding back our adoption of technology right now. I would say that when we try to introduce this, the the obstacles or the fear came from the faculty and not from the students. The students are willing to move in and uh, the faculty need to be trained. So training of the trainer is an absolute must for technology to, in, to move into the education space. Okay. In your case, does this uh, issue really apply? Fortunately, no, because we started off with the idea and the 100% and the belief that we will not get that 500, that 1,000 group of teachers who can teach all the students across the country. And we are talking about a whole bunch of programs and courses that these students will have to go forward and prepare for. You look at an MBA entrance exam, it's an entrance exam, they have to right. fight. So they are worried, is this person fit enough to give me better, give me more? That's where the whole system of additional learning, tuition classes, coaching, correspondence, all of that comes in. Fortunately for us, we were very sure that will not work out. So from uh, from an aspiration of 500, we came down to a maximum of maybe 50 teachers is what we will have. But we will use technology, the VSATs, 100% the tablets, which is very, very personalized and one-to-one, -one, which will help these students get access to these best trainers. And they need to be technologically armed, uh, if I can uh, put it that way. Since, Mr. Jain, you introduced that uh, little bit of caution into the conversation, I'm going to ask you, what do you think is hindering the... Uh, you know, rapid adoption of technology in education in India today? I think two things. Uh, one is the quality and the quantum of digitized content. If I go to a school, I am using from content from various publishers. Now, as a school, do I decide to move halfway through with two content providers and not with the balance? Do I stick with physical books in some places and e-content? So I think that's one key thing. And the other thing I think is the the reluctance or the acceptance of the teaching community while we need to train them but also I feel there is a, some sort of a, a, a feeling there that maybe they are not going to be required as much so maybe that's the kind of reluctance that the teachers may be also facing in terms of making it as an acceptable uh, thing within the schools. Mr. Khan, the DPS schools, yes. your experience beyond DPS. What my practical experience has been over the five, six years, uh, from the last five, six years, we've noticed that teachers are willing and they know that technology is here to stay and it's just an enabler for them to uh, make better teachers. So I think the potential is limitless. We'll talk about exactly how it's shaping up in many parts of India. Before that, we're going to take a break, but we will leave you with a glimpse of technology and the transformational role it is playing in vocational education in our country today. NTT was started late in the 50s and the very main purpose was to promote vocational education among the Indian youth. See, at the moment the tablets are used for uh, delivering the training, publishing the test papers, assessment, and even the tab has an automated software which will be used for automatic evaluation. So we want to have a tab which is, uh, you know, affordable by the students' community. Tomorrow's classroom have to become a very interesting room of learning. And we have created our technology here that if a student for any reason does not attend a class, 
he can even go back to his hostel call back the lecture and see that lecture in his own hostel room and he can see it as many times as he wants until he thinks he has understood it Now and Samsung presents Bizbyte, focusing on the transformational role of technology in the education sector. Mr. Jain, what to you is a smart classroom? Smart classroom is an initiative that Samsung has brought to India and also globally. What we are looking at is how can we make a school totally digitally connected. We move away from a normal blackboard or a whiteboard to an e-board now. and samsung display systems actually enable a touch screen capability wherein the teacher can use the e board and make the entire class work through that and the tablets that the students are having are connected to the e board so the students don't any more need to take notes in the classroom they can actually have a direct download of what the teacher is teaching right on the tablet itself that's what i call the three c's of technology that is enabling this so this is the first c which we call the connect The second C is the content. Now, digitally available content, which has videos and you know very rich media content available, which the student can actually see on the e-board, and the explanation from the teacher's side is that much more simpler and more immersive for the student to understand. And the third C, which actually is enabled in this smart classroom, is collaboration. Using the SMAB Smart School concept, the schools. can now collaborate and interact with the parents the teacher can interact with the student and the students can interact with other students today i can take my exams through that tablet and actually the results come in almost immediately and all my scores are visible to my parents so it becomes a total complete end to end solution for the students for the school and the parents you know you talked about content rich content digitally rich content and i know mr prakash has some concerns about standards of content the tablet today is obviously a medium where you can watch videos my problem is when a group of let's say 10 15 20 teachers come in teachers let's not call them institutions and they say this is the best way to learn a particular concept and it's shoddy we need to have some kind of regulation so regulation is a very strong word but some kind of uh, rules which the students can follow the institutions can follow the parents can follow in terms of what they to can distinguish be. between good content and mediocre content because a video is not content sure mr khan can you give us a live example of technology at play in your classrooms see uh, at the school level we've been able to really see the change as mr jain was saying for example our communication with the parents has been faster quicker better and as far as the classroom situation is concerned we have students who done excellent uh, content by themselves after getting these smart classes they've used this technology to broadcast these videos and ideas throughout the school so the school has the parameters to check the content what content can be broadcast but when we have observed over the last 7 to 8 years the students have become they've understood the concept better and at the same time we've been able to do a lot of international learning over these particular smart classes and technology like the students are exposed to the global challenges and in one way it has made the world one global village so we've been able to really see the results on the ground mr agraj again i want you to literally help us step into one of your classrooms and help us understand what specifically is technology doing for your students and your teachers we are also connected to the wifi completely all the centers and the hostels and our lectures do stay in the cloud so the students can call back the lectures even if they don't understand in the classroom they can go back to the hostels and then uh, see these lectures as long as they wish and they can post questions we have virtual community system where any student can pose a question and we have faculties designated faculties to come and answer so to have a good teacher of a certain standard in all the centers is not required so the interesting cost effectiveness is 100% we can and it's not so expensive right it's fascinating what you've just described 
I want to understand uh, from you, Mr. Shekhar, and I know you work in the education sector a great deal. How common is it to find that kind of virtual classroom, that kind of technology adoption? Today, one of the challenges in the Indian education sector, before I, I address this point, is that we do not have a credible accreditation agencies which ranks the institutions. Mm -hmm. We lack that. Secondly, we're talking about the content. Today, all the content is available in, intra, in, in internet, in technology. The ability of the institutions to gain that content, consolidate the content and give it for the students needs a solid technology infrastructure. And that is the biggest challenge because the cost of creating a technology infrastructure is much more higher. And we are talking about a private institutions which can afford, but I am going to one step further. Today, none of the government schools where predominant students are studying that they have that facility of this technology. First thing is that creating the technology infrastructure should be much cost effective and affordability. If these two things you are able to achieve it. Why don't you just uh, address it head on? I mean, you know, how are you going to achieve the uh affordability, the desired affordability in the Indian context. Education is still not recognized as an industry by any of the financial lending agencies. The reception or your, your ability to impress a funding agency for funding an education institution is much more challenging than any other sector. So the first thing which I would prefer is I expect a new government education sector policy by 2015, Jan 2015. Probably somewhere the government should make education as an industry and make education as a priority industry because that is what you need to achieve by 2020, what the status which you said across. Okay, point taken. We're going to take a break, but I am going to leave everyone with a glimpse of how tablets in the hands of these students are on the ground a reality today and they are indeed transforming pockets of education in India. We'll be back in a moment. Think and Learn, parent company of Baiju's classes. We are the pioneers in using technology as an enabler in taking uh, high quality content and teachers across segments and across the country. Recently, after introducing tablet as a medium, uh, from a one-to-many model, we have made it one-on-one, -on -one, which is more personalized, where the students are able to access or are having access to these kind of teachers whenever they want and wherever they want. If you look at education right now, there's a teacher and there's a student and both of them keep interacting, right? There are obviously these other elements such as parents and uh, administrators who come in schools who, who are also eager to improve the whole process of learning. When you bring in technology, you are able to bring in all these people together and then help all of them. From the left side of the in a normal classroom, when with one teacher teaching 50 students, you have to rely a lot on the students' visualization, their scope of imagination for them to understand the subject. The benefit the tablet offers is it can be really personalized and one-on-one, -on -one, being adaptive so that every student can learn at his own pace and understand the way he understands first. Back. You're watching ET Now and Samsung presents this vibe. Today we're evaluating the role of technology in the Indian education sector. Each of our panel members is going to now project. And uh, Mr. Regaraj, that question is coming to you first. What's next? We really want to move into online um, evaluation, testing. So this is what we are looking. Ultimately, bottom line is no papers anywhere inside the NTTF. Okay. Mr. Prakash, how are you going to push the technology barriers? If you look at what our aim should ideally have been, that we provide classes for students for all these different courses, the idea would have been to open up 10 times, 20 times, 100 times more the number of centers. That's the idea, right? In the last four months, we have added 10,000 students. That's three times more than what we have done in any three month period. And now our current run rate is 4,000 students per month. So in terms of technology enabling us, uh, this has been the solution. The Samsung tabs and the courses being provided to students to study anytime, anywhere that they want, any number of times that they want, has helped the students. And it's, it's shown in numbers. What we would like to do is improve the content to such a level that they can visualize everything. 
So today, I have things that are still written in textual format. I don't have a visual representation for all of it. Tomorrow, I'll have a 3D model for each and everything. So they want to sit down and visualize it without the actual object being there in front of them. The tab will help them do that. The focus is on richer content. Mr. Khan, technologically, how would you like to go you know, further? We would like to use this technology to enable better learning, better concept understanding. Because if at an early stage we understand concepts better and know for what we are learning, for what whatever we are learning, that makes the job much more easier. And at the same time, we have observed over the last eight to 10 years that efficiency increases. And with technology, we make greener and cleaner campuses as well. And the flexibility technology gives, because in a classroom situation, once a lecture is over, if a student has not understood the concept, he, he sometimes he may be hesitant to ask. One very important thing, if he's not understood the campus he, uh, the concept, he has the liberty to go back and play the session. And sometimes students get very embarrassed in a classroom to say, I didn't understand. Yes. So this gives us a greater flexibility and us many more chances for the student to learn. Mr. Jen, you've had a chance to listen to it, what everybody on the panel has expressed. And perhaps there's room for, you know, technology to go much further, much faster. What's your vision of the future? We at Samsung are actually investing in an education-only tablet so that, two reasons, so that we can ensure that whatever is minimum required to be on the tablet from an education front is there, plus we help bring down the cost to a, a reasonable level. Today, tablets are available at less than 10,000 rupees as well. And the idea is to massify it so that it's in the hand of each and every uh, student. The second thing is actually we are also investing in terms of creating an infrastructure wherein we can build up a platform and get the content providers to come on that so that an end-to-end -end solution is available to a school. And the school doesn't need to, like you mentioned, marry two systems and get into one system or look at going to different content providers. I really see that all that maybe, you know, some, some children of the next few years, over the next few years will carry to school is just a tablet. That's a tablet in which all my books will be. That will be also my notebook wherein I will actually do all my exercises. Uh, the Samsung's innovative S Pen will ensure that I don't lose the art of handwriting. Yes. And I still <laughs> am able to write on my, on my uh, tablet. And that is where... It's also your report card, perhaps. It's, it's, it's going to be my assessment. It's going to be all in all for me to be able to work on in my education career. And how does the cost also come out is that tablet may just be an investment for once. And every year, I do invest in new books and a new curriculum. All that can be ported onto the same tablet. And the ROI will come over the next two to three years that it will actually come out to be a cheaper uh, asset than to buy physical books. I was discussing with uh, someone on the publishing side, and they were saying that today we give books and we give e-content free with it along with it. I'm sure what's going to happen is that the e-content will be charged and the physical book will come free along with it. That's, that's the future. That's the future. Mr. Shekhar, we have not adequately discussed the potential of technology in our government school system. Reflect on whether or not there are heartening signs on that front. The entire education in the days to come, technology is going to dominate. Having said that, first, before the government embraces the technology in the schools, the government should embrace the technology for its own administration. Mm -hmm. And that's the first, what I would call the roadblock. Second, I would think so that the government recognizes the importance of technology in imparting education. And one of the ways the government is trying to do is that requesting the private sectors to adopt some of the institutes. The way I look at it is that there could be a more public-private sector participation in imparting of technology into the government schools and the government education sector so that the benefit of the technology is available to our pan-India basis. Having said that, the way I would like the future to be is that we should change the pedagogy in the education system completely, we should shift the pedagogy. Second one, what should be is that I want the teachers and the teaching should be a most attractive profession. If the teaching has converted into a passionate profession, then definitely I would think that the entire technology which you are talking about will yield the results which the country needs looking at 2020 market. Well, consider this. Today, technology could allow a gifted professional 
to be a part-time teacher as Absolutely. well. So, you know, those are some interesting options that technology is throwing up. I think we have to change the way we imagine Absolutely. and perceive education globally and in India. It's a wrap on this edition of ET Now and Samsung Presents BizBytes, a show that is devoted to exploring the impact of technology on critical sectors of the Indian economy. Before we go, here's a chance to win the recently launched Samsung Galaxy Tab S. You have to log on to the website bizbytes.in, answer a simple question based on today's show, and if you get it right, you could be winning a tab. Thanks very much for joining us today. We'll be back next week. Goodbye.